Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes and another repair video. This time it is a ZX Spectrum Plus that has a sticker which says Your unit has been carefully repaired and calibrated before dispatch to you. However, if you have any queries regarding this unit, please telephone Baron Service Centre. It's got this red made in UK bit on the back. Is that normal? I'm not sure to be honest. Um, overall, it's in pretty good condition. It's got all the feet. Um, it's missing the foam pads off the legs, but otherwise it's looking pretty good. It has this metal backing plate on the keyboard, which is always nice to see. I think it's a lot better than the plastic one. The keyboard membrane is knackered. I could try trimming the ends, but I'm just going to replace it. Our ULA ends in a 7, which is a good sign, but the um, scorch marks on that sticker are a bad sign. Our ZX8401 has a sticker as well, so I guess it was tested at some point. On the back, everything looks okay. There is this mod to the power circuit, which I'm told is a factory mod, so I'm going to leave it where it is um, and just get on with the repair. I am going to reattach that wire because it's hanging on by almost nothing at all. So let's set a current limit on the bench supply and see what we're drawing. We're drawing too much current, 0.78 amps, it should be near 0 0.6 I think. Um, with a 7805 on. So how are our voltages? For 5 volts we have uh, 7, so the 7805 I think is shot. For plus 12 we have 3, so I think TR4 and or TR5 are shot. And look at this, minus 5 started about minus 1.2 and as I'm measuring it's going positive. So maybe something has just died while we were testing the voltages. I'm not sure, but I will replace TR4, TR5 and the voltage regulator and we'll check the voltages again after that. Here's the voltage regulator, we need to remove the heatsink and replace it. And I'm going to do all these mods using as many screen wipes as I can possibly find in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to put a switching regulator in to keep the heat down because I think this Spectrum's had a hard enough life. And there we have it all replaced. Let's get the uh, multimeter out and check these voltages. Plus 5 is back, nice. Plus 12 is back, and minus 5 is also back. A little bit over, I think that's fine. Now I want to see what it's doing, so let's bash out a quick composite video mod and have a look what we are getting. It is a white border, good sign. Z80 and ROM are probably doing okay but just a black screen. There's no red lines, so I would say the lower memory test is failing to run at all. There must be something seriously wrong with the lower memory. I should be able to run a diagnostics ROM with it in this state. It's just a memory issue. So I'm going to use this one that I made in a previous video. First of all, I'm gonna clean the edge connector up a little bit because it was looking uh, a little bit caked and um, also take the opportunity to clean up all of these fiberglass shavings before they get into my skin. Our diagnostics ROM will test the lower RAM first. It's telling me the bit zero is bad, corresponding to IC6. Then it tests the upper RAM and it tells me IC22 is bad. But let's run it again. Immediately after, it thinks bit five is bad in the lower RAM, IC11. Let's run it again. And this time bits four and three are bad. So it's kind of sporadic. Let's go again on upper RAM and it says IC22 again. So I'm going to fix that upper RAM first because it's consistently telling me that IC22 is bad and it was actually getting a little bit warm. Um, so I'm just going to cut it out. I know it's broken and quickly check the power draw, current draw and it is 0.59 amps. That's much more close to what we wanted to see. Um, I'll pull all these legs out since I chopped it out and clear out these joints. I'm going to pop a socket in there and a replacement chip because I've got loads of those. Oh, 
Okay, let's go again. Lower RAM test first. That doesn't look good. And wow, well, all bits except 4 and 2 are bad. That's uh, that's pretty serious. How about the upper RAM? Should be fine, or at least it should get further. Yeah, it's got onto te test uh, 2. And on test 2, it told me that bit 3 is bad. And I ran it again, and it said, Total addressing error. Suspect the three main chips. Upper RAM test again, and it, again, it tells me bit 3, which is IC18. Let's run lower RAM, and all bits except 4. Upper RAM again tells me IC18. So something's seriously wrong with the lower RAM. Let's take a quick look. Here's our schematic of an issue 6A. I'm going to highlight the main chips that we're interested in. That's the CPU, the ULA, low and upper RAM, and the ZX8401. Our failure mode is very sporadic, and the ROM suggested an addressing error. Well, what is addressing the lower RAM? It's either the ULA, or the CPU via the ZX8401. So the problem could be with either of these. However, the CPU is also addressing upper RAM, and the upper RAM failure is fairly stable. So that means I'm going to have to suspect the ULA, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the scorch marks on the sticker, which was on the ULA, as we see here. Lucky for me, I've got some spares, so I'll put one of those in, and I've also replaced the bad upper RAM chip. Lower RAM tests have passed, and the upper RAM tests also passed. Nice. However, I've noticed there's been no beeping throughout any of this, which can only mean that this machine is a mute, there's a problem with the speaker circuit. So here's the speaker circuit, we're going to probe around in it. The line going off to the left is going to the ULA, and we're going to try loading a game while we probe around. Let's start by probing the mix socket, and there's our signal wiggling around. Lovely. Next, let's do the ULA side and check that our signal's getting through the capacitor and resistor, and it is, there it is. How about the other side of D9? Well, I just get noise around about zero volts there. So we're getting pretty close to the problem here. And what we should find is nine volts on the collector of TR7, which we do, and uh, because that's there, and zero volts is at the base. I think that transistor is still working correctly. It hasn't broken down, uh, which means I think the issue is going to be with our diode D9. Just to double check, I'm running the audio test from the diagnostic ROM here, and that red part on the schematic, as you can see, is still about zero. What we should get is a nice, clean, loud square wave tone that increases in frequency. If I probe the good side of the diode here, you can actually see the frequency increasing as the test runs. I'm lucky enough to have a working issue 6 under the desk, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a continuity test on this diode. With the probes one way around, I get no continuity at all, and with the probes the other way around, I do get a reading. So let's do that exact same test on a working issue 6A. With the probes one way around, I get a reading, and with the probes the other way around, I still get a reading. So the difference there makes me pretty sure that this diode is broken. I'm going to remove it and pop in a spare. Okay, here's a special treat. Here is the test tone which you've seen on the oscilloscope but haven't heard yet. So we've fixed it. Let's have a couple more songs to celebrate.
To finish up, I put some new capacitors in, put a heatsink on the ULA, and I did loosen up that reset cable. It was quite tight. I just kind of untwizzled it a bit. And there we go. Another one saved, and it was another write off, but it's alive again. So let's get it to a new home. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.